Thank you all for being here tonight. This is the Southwest Minnesota Regional Arts Council's um, celebration of John Sterner and his artwork. If you're joining us uh, virtually during the actual 5.30 to 6-ish timeframe on Thursday, January 20th, um, thanks for being here with us. If you're watching this after the fact on our website, thanks for being here with us. You'll get a recording of everything that happened on this um, during this time frame. So we are just so honored to have John exhibiting in our gallery in Marshall, Minnesota. I have a little bit of information that I pulled from some pieces um, of uh, some research and information John's even provided to me about himself. And I'd like to share that with you. So John Sterner, an artist, teacher, coach, Sichangu Lakota, parent, husband, brother, and son. He has been involved in art in so many aspects. He has taught for 28 years in everything from first grade through university. He has made personal and public art and works in many, many mediums. He sculpts in bronze, iron, and fabricated steel. He makes graphic art on his computer and paper, and he loves to paint. He loves to paint in a lot of different mediums, oil, acrylics, um, plein air is a recent love of his that he has just taken off with. He, he lives in southwestern Minnesota near Marshall, but was born in Flandreau, South Dakota. The opportunity to create art that is culturally incorporating my heritage is an important part of my personal journey to find out who I am as a person, instructor, and artist, John wrote. He also wrote and shared with me that he has um, won awards in sculpture, People's Choice two times for the Sioux Falls Sculpture Walk, um, third place in the Duluth Plein Air Art Paint Out, and he also is a one of the grantees that we hold up high and lift up and support. He's received a number of SMOC grants most recently, he received a SMOC Established Career Artist Grant from us, and with that project, he created the exhibit that is now on display in the gallery. And that is on display in the SMOC gallery until the end of February. I believe it's February 25th. You have, in, in to, you have lots of time to come and uh, check out the gallery. And so as far as an agenda tonight, we would love to share with you a, it's about a seven minute video that shows the, shows the exhibit, shows John's work that as it's hanging in our gallery. And then after that video, I'm going to turn it over to John. He's going to tell you a little bit more about his art. He's going to tell you all the great things he's got going on as he drives in the cities. He is he is multi-talented. Um, and so we're going to kick it off and I'm going to turn it over to Crystal. And thank you, Crystal, for always managing technology. Crystal put this video together and we will, um, there will be some music on in the background, but this is a little journey. We're excited to have you check out.
awesome. I have to say, uh, seeing this exhibit in person is like a must do. Uh, the, the large impactful work is, is something you just have to experience. So I would encourage you to get into the Smock Gallery or find John at his next opening. And with that, I'll turn it over to John. Um, John, if you're able to um, share a few thoughts, um, share a little bit of news about what's going on in your life and your artwork, and um, then we can take some questions. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity, for this blessing. Um, it's, uh, I'm honored and, um, and very, uh, humbled to be to be allowed this opportunity um it's just uh you know one of the things that uh, i was thinking about as i was looking at the pictures is that uh you know i grew up in a house that was uh of mix my dad is german and czechoslovakian and he grew up in an orphanage and had no idea who or what he was other than being his his name mike sterner and uh, my mom grew up Sichangu Lakota from Western South Dakota and grew up with a, a giant, giant family and everything was about family and knowing who you were and where you fit in the line. And uh, I grew up as a young boy knowing that because uh, I spent so much time with my family on the reservation. Um, but I grew up in Marshall um, in a sense, in a you describe it as a loan because I was the only, I was one of only five people of color in the Marshall School District at the time that I was there. And, and you lose sight of who you are. Um, and as I've grown older, I keep trying to recount the things that I was taught by my grandparents when I was younger. And um, I always come back to being a four-year-old or a three-year-old boy. And my mom and dad had an event that they were at. So my my Lakota grandmother was watching me, my Unchi, and uh, she got some paper out, some colored crayons, and she said, well, we're going to draw tonight, and she asked me to draw a giraffe, and she asked me to draw an elephant, and, uh, and a lion, and a horse, and I drew all these animals, and, and she remarked to me, she said, boy, you're already good at drawing, and, and she did say, boy, she said, Okshila, you are very good at drawing. And Hokshila means boy. And um, I responded, you know, I was like, well, thanks, Grandma. And she said, you know, do you know why you're good at drawing? And I said, you know, I said, I don't know. And she said, it's because you are a Sichangu Lakota. And I said, oh. And she said, and you're destined to draw because you come from a family of artists. And uh, so, you know, that's kind of always been my, my footprint. It's who I've tried to be and everything that I do and um, all that I've been um, and all that I hope to be in the future. So, um, you know, uh, trying to live up to, in a sense, what my grandma had. For me, it's something that I enjoy. Um, I can spend countless hours uh, making art and feel very refreshed and um, rejuvenated when I make it, um, especially now making, uh, when I do plain air, uh, it's such a, it's such a wonderful feeling to be outside in nature. Uh, when I'm on the side of the road, I usually have to have headphones to quiet the, the environment, but when I can sneak off into a little further in, uh, it's magical because you can hear I mean, you can hear every little bug, every little insect, every little bird. You can sometimes hear animals. The, the, this fall, I heard a rabbit, and it was just moving along the ground about 20 feet away from me. You know, so it's just this magical uh, connection for me to Mother Earth when I paint Mother Earth. And um, it's a magical moment, and it helps me to know who, who I am and what I'm doing. So um, I really... Um, really love making art and uh, I can only thank Tungashula and the Great Spirit for and God for allowing me this opportunity to have John Sterner talking about his paint in. <laughs> so I uh, um, you know that's 
that's why I do it and um, what I take from it. Uh, I, I've got a number of opportunities coming up here. I'm, uh, I'm currently in house in my barn, which is frozen right now. I am working on, my son and I are welding together a 15 foot Eagle. That'll be a fabricated steel that is gonna go to uh, Red Wing or Northfield of Minnesota, excuse me. Um, and uh, we're pretty excited about that. That should be, I think it's a mid April or uh, at some point in April, the delivery date. Uh, I haven't gotten full confirmation on that one, but I'm, we're gonna be madly working on it here as soon as it gets a little warmer. And then um, I uh, potential to make another sculpture for a uh, Red Wing sculpture walk. Uh, we're in process on that, has to go before the committee. Um, I'm also making a baptismal font that will involve sweet grass and glass. Uh, we had a great artist out of Stillwater um, who has made the, the glass bowl and it's gorgeous. And now my job is to model sweet grass into looking like sweet grass and uh, have it rise up and caress and hold the basin of glass so that they can do. And that's for a church in Minneapolis, Trinity Lutheran. So I've got a lot of things going there. I've got another art show that will start uh, in the Ridgewater School District, uh, so to speak. It'll be one at the Ridgewater campus in Wilmer and one at the Ridgewater campus in Hutchinson. So I've got that coming up this spring and that'll include the work that I have here and some other work that I'll be working on to get done before the start date on that one. So it's been a very busy time for me. Um, been madly making art. And, uh, I teach art and uh, just, yeah. I'm waiting to see if I, yep, there, I'm off mute. John, you, you always, you not only bless people with your art, but you bless me with your storytelling. And I just so appreciate um, all the knowledge you give when you, when you share things about yourself and things about your artwork. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. Folks that are on, if you would like to um, open up and, and ask John a question or Dan, get more you information. questions for John about his art? Go ahead, Dan. You want to see a picture, Dan? <laughs> Dan, we can hear you now. Where you oh! asking a question? <laughs> oh, shucks. <laughs> Benny's not feeling good today. <laughs> oh. And uh, he's. He's normally chatty. Hey, I got to tell you a story, Dan. So we, uh, I came back from your show, the Don't Doubt Your Horses show. And uh, after you and I had met and talked, and I, I brought it to my classroom, and I, I, I told my kids that we're going to do a project for my friend, and that we're going we're gonna to talk about what it means to don't doubt your horses. And, uh, and, and we went through the whole, you know, idea that, that you have to have the courage to step forward and just draw and make those marks and not be afraid to make those marks. And sometimes you fall off your horse and you just got to get back on. And uh, about a, a week and a half ago, we're sitting in our class and I drawing something and one of the kids said oh don't worry about it don't doubt your horses just do it after we did it and wide open and they just they repeated what you said and 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 they took it to heart with what we had talked about so it was fantastic man thanks for that opportunity and john thank you for that story john um brought my don't doubt your horses uh, postcards on the idea to his Lakeview class and 418 of his students or we had students drew 418 drawings uh, oh. and sent them to me and I've been posting those on Instagram for the Don't Doubt Your Horses project but John this story is a really good example of how uh, generous hearted and humble you you act I think you're humble you certainly <laughs> act humble <laughs> well I hope I am oh, I, I, I believe you're pretty humble and, and John um, deflected this, this um, 
Gary, I thought he and I had a, I'm, I'm not going to tell, tell all, I'm not going to step, step on your story, but John and I had a good discussion about things that um, grip an artist with fear or, or uh, injure an artist's hand uh, psychically or psychologically. And um, John surpassed a difficulty in his life where uh, an individual met, uh, a, a mentor uh, spoke harshly to him and, and crippled his, his uh, painting hand, so to speak, his psychological painting hand. And um, he, is, he had the, uh, John had the advantage of that, having that grandmother who strengthened him when he was young. Uh, and he also had the advantage of having that spirit inside him of strength where he got to go beyond um, those harsh words and, and painful cutting words of his men. Aho. Filamahe, thank you. You're welcome. So it's a, it's a form of bravery, John. John exhibits yes. a lot of bravery. Thank you. Yes. Very moving. Uh, John, was it is it weird to do the baptismal font? It's a different it's, um, different spiritual belief, maybe a different religion than what you're currently practicing, maybe. Uh no. Um, I I was raised my well. My grandfather was a really interesting story. There, my grandfather was in World War II, and he was a part of a group of people that were the Sichangu Lakota. Uh, code talkers on the German side. So um, they were guys that coordinated the tanks and the movements of troops for the Americans and the British. Uh, and they spoke Lakota and they and they did the code talking that way, just like uh, in, the, in the Navajo on the Japanese side. And little is known about the Lakota because the Japanese or the Navajo got all the credit. Uh, but, you know, I'm not saying that as in like, you know, oh, shit, you know, but it's that uh, they were given a 50 year where they couldn't speak about it. And uh, um, it just, that just came due just a little while ago. And um, one of our relatives uh, spoke out and told about all of our cousins, well, they would have been our grandfathers, all of our grandfathers who were code talkers. Well, we have a picture at home of my grandfather in an army uniform and there's an excuse me, but there's a white man sitting next to him and he's in uniform. And whenever we asked my grandfather who this was, he would only just say, he's my friend. He would never allude to what the person's role was or why he was his friend. He would just say he was his friend. Um, it comes out, that's the guy. Uh, if you've seen the movie, uh, Wind, Walk, Wind Talkers are, uh, you know, with Nicolas Cage, he's, that guy was the Nicolas Cage character whose job was to make sure that my grandfather didn't uh, fall into the hands of the Germans. Well, my grandfather was walking behind the tank and uh, the Germans were strafing the field and a bullet hit my grandfather in the waist and his stomach and his intestines came out. And uh, that man and his, my grandfather's cousin who happened to be with them, they laid in the ground and they pushed everything back inside. And the medic came over and sprinkled the, the powder on and the things that they did. And they all prayed at that moment that if Tungashila would, um, would help him to stay alive, he would become a man of God's word. And uh, a letter was sent home to my grandmother that said he had died. Um, my mom, there's a great story about my mom and, the, and as a baby, and she responded to that, that he's not dead, he's alive, I've seen him. Um, and uh, which goes into Lakota symbolism and then, you know, being visited by angels in the, in the Christian sense. And so when my grandfather finally came home, he, he became a, a lay minister for the Episcopal Church and was, so I was raised both believing in Lakota beliefs and then as an Episcopal. And then my dad was raised in the Catholic Church, so I've been I've been uh, baptized and, and confirmed in the Catholic Church, and then by marriage I'm Norwegian, so that means I'm Lutheran. So I've been raised that way too, um, and and so I believe you know in many things. I believe that there's there's way too many similarities for them not to be the same. So um, 
you know, for me, it, it's the, the spiritualness of how leaves and plants grow every spring and rise from the dead from the winter, um, you know, is uh, very symbolic of Lakota life, the circle of life, and it's also very symbolic of Christian life, too. So, uh, you know, for me, it was... Um, it, it wasn't a conflict. It was uh, the, the hard part is, is getting it all to flow together to make the sculpture look uh, as impressive as it can be. And that's been the challenge so far. That was a long ways to go to just say that, right? <laughs> it made a lot of sense and it was worth it. Thanks, John. Yeah, yeah so bet, worth man. it. So worth it. And, and you had me, I've gotten emotional twice so far tonight. So... <laughs> Good job. <laughs> hey, thank you. Uh, whenever I think of my grandfather, that's what happens. So that's great. Oh, my. Yeah. Hey, folks, I'm going to give um, is somebody else a chance to jump in. I don't bite. Actually, I do have a little bit of a question, John. Can you talk about? Um, you have some paintings in the plain air section that I think are Italy, if I heard. Can you talk yeah. more about where those come from? Uh, yeah. So, um, well, you know, I have, I've had two back surgeries, so it kind of slowed down my, uh, my, um, my sculpture experience. And when I had those uh, back surgeries, I was laying downstairs in my basement and I was rather bored because the TV was showing the same thing. So my wife brought down, my wife Tracy brought down uh, a gouache set that I had brought home from SMSU. And she said, well, while you're down here, you want to paint some of those pictures you took in the Black Hills last, um, last year. So I said, oh, okay. <laughs> and I had, that was the first time I picked up a brush since college. So um, I started to use gouache and I started to make these paintings. Uh, so last winter, it was really cold, and I didn't have the opportunity to get outside and do as much plain air as I wanted. And Joel Skillings is the wrestling coach over in Minnesota, and his, uh, unfortunately, his wife had passed at the beginning of COVID, and not from COVID either, but it was, it was a very mournful and a very sad moment. And um, I lift Joel up in this moment because he's still, you know, it's still a moment for him. But he asked me if I could paint some a picture of his family's vacation spot in the Black Hills, or not Black Hills, but in Italy. So he, that Volterra one, is the um, is one of those images, and it's the only place in Italy that I had never been. So um, I uh, I took his pictures and 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 I painted that image for him, and I painted two more images from him. But I was always of a fact that. Um, I had to have at least visited the area um, and taken a picture from it before I could paint it. So the rest of those are all places that I've been, and those are photographs that I've that I've uh, taken. And I arrange my my gouache setup um, like I would my plein air setup, and I I have the picture sitting directly to the right um, because I'm left-handed, and I I watch the picture. And I look at it and I compose the picture just like I would if I was outside plein air. And so it was really fun because, um, you know, there's, a, you get a, you get a prep hour in school and you're supposed to be getting yourself ready for your next class, but sometimes you just need to take a mental break. And so sometimes during my prep, I would, uh, I'd be working on those paintings and I would have it arranged in my classroom so that I could work on it. And then in the evening when I get home and um, we're sitting, you know, just doing family time. Um, and we're watching a little TV, then for me, it was very much always a moment making art because that's what my mom and dad would be watching TV and I made art beside them. So to me, that's a very family moment for me. So most of that work was created from pictures that I had taken and, uh, and, and really just felt drawn to the image. Um, you know, the Monte Pulciano Alley is one that uh, I just am amazed that looks over the Valley of the Sun, it's called. Uh, the Valley do Orca, I think it is, and um, it's uh, it's actually uh, the lake right below it is where Hannibal defeated the Romans. So it's you know it's um, uh, it's, it's, I it, I know the area, I know the feeling. On um, when I completed the Mustang for SMSU, um, 
it was my wife and I's 25th wedding anniversary and I had enough money to take her for our anniversary to Italy. Uh, the deal was though, it was a plain air painting workshop. So <laughs> but she got to sit and drink wine while I sat and painted. So, um, but it was, you know, and it was such a magical experience for both of us. And we're hoping to get back there someday. And everything to us is all about, we watch everything Italian. We, uh, because it was just, it's really, a, I don't know. It's just, you know, I imagine that, um, I've been to Western California and Southwestern California in that area. And it's very reminiscent of the same atmosphere and uh, the colors are really similar and the amount of produce that the place makes and the, the amount of different trees and fauna that there are, it's, it's very similar to what it's like to be in Umbria or uh, Tuscany. So, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, this is Dale Handine speaking. Hey, Dale. hey, hi, John. I How wanted to, well, I'm, I'm pretty good. And I wanted to pipe in and say thank you for ideas that you shared with uh, our teachers at, can it be now the last Mervid training that we had? Yeah. There's been another one just the other day where I yep. was not present. But I uh, we wanted you. to... Well, thank you. I missed all of you, too. Um, I really, really enjoy, especially those where you are present. You really elevate the whole experience, I want to say, uh, in all honesty. But you shared with us that um, the idea in bringing uh, Native American heritage to the classroom is not so much to have students trying to make a facsimile of what someone had done, but to understand the ideas behind it and how and why uh, things were done as they were. And you mentioned ledger drawings and that um, getting a hold of a book and repurposing it was more the idea than to try to recreate uh, the, the, the work as done in uh, history. And so indeed I did, as you suggested, and got unreadable novels from the public library and talked to kids about repurposing available materials. And I think they understood it and um, they, they gladly did the exercise and we saw really good results. And I chose for the best quality paper in the unreadable novels on the free file. <laughs> so That's thank awesome. you. Thank you for the idea. Yeah. And then also in that same discussion, we talked a little bit about um, uh, Pollock with the drip painting. Oh, Jackson, yes. And yeah, Jackson Pollock. And the idea that he was inspired in his drip paintings by observing ceremonial sand painting by Native people. Yeah, that's right. Yep. That's right. And, yep, yep. And... Uh, I so happened to be on a, some kind of a chat online and sure enough, uh, someone with much greater art history knowledge than I spoke at length about that. And evidently his father uh, did a good deal of travel and he as a young person went with his father and was privy to some ceremonial sand painting. And that oh. is what inspired his beautiful drip work that is oh. so widely misunderstood. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So thank you again for those. Oh, you bet. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if it's not entirely inappropriate, I would like to invite you, John, to speak to a group in Wilmer on a Zoom of a Sunday morning sometime. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And more maybe, than happy to. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Then I'll try to uh, find contact information and get back in touch in a more more appropriate fashion. But uh, excellent. Yep. Excellent. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, John. <laughs> and thank you all for for this evening. Lovely. Yeah. And thank you all. Any other questions or comments or things you want to lift up in celebration of John and his artwork? I'm still with you. Yes. This is Dale again. Yeah. Just the, the wonderful um, inclusivity that 
you can't help but represent with your uh, multicultural um, heritage. I, I think is such a wonderful message. Um, and so many people have a, a, a complicated or richly uh, diverse heritage and maybe are ignorant of it or, or maybe aren't encouraged to, to embrace it, but you do and speak so beautifully about it. And I think um, that's the path we're all on is to, is to uh, find that kind of uh, universal um, acceptance of, of one another and, and um, practice the, the cultural enrichment among us, you know, we're, right. we're on a good trajectory and, uh, you know, how far we've come, how far we have to go. But thank you for your example. Yeah. John, I was wondering if you would um, pick one of the paintings um, that are in your the main part of your show and just tell us a little more about your inspiration behind that and, and how you came up with that piece. Uh, well, let's, we could go with, um, it's the one that has the, uh, the three images of Sente Gleshka. He, uh, his name is Spotted Tail. Um, and uh, so Spotted Tail was a Lakota, a Sichangu Lakota leader from um, the 1860s and 1870s, um, and he is uh, the leader of the of the tribe that moved, uh, basically moved them onto the reservation. Uh, he he had an experience that, um, uh, and it's it's an interesting thought process when you think about it. But um, so if a 15 year old or a 14 year old made a mistake. Um, Rather than punish the 14, 15, or 16-year-old, the, um, the adult would take the punishment and thereby showing the young adults or the, the teenager that their actions were bigger than themselves and that their actions created a wave and affected other people. And um, knowing that, uh, there were there were three young Indian men that um, uh, they killed a cow and it belonged to a settler and the settler got mad and asked that the the cow be accounted for and so the soldiers came and said that these three young men need to go to jail and uh, my spotted tail uh, he stepped forward with uh, two other men who were older and they took the punishment. And so they went to jail instead of the three young men. And, uh, and then they were shipped off to actually, they ended up in Florida. And during that time, uh, Spotted Tail rode on a train and he got to see all of America at that time and how many people there were and that the Lakota weren't that many people. And that to fight against this group of people was probably not the smartest thing because we we weren't going to win because of the numbers that this group of people had and so that's why when he came home he decided that the only way to survive was to become them and so he moved his family onto the reservation sent his kids to the carlisle indian school and and tried to change the thought process of the lakota in a sense to um to get them to move forward and uh my grandfather, his name is Ogigampi, and it means they walk around him. And um, we're not necessarily sure what the original intent of that name was. And, uh, you know, it could be that he was held in high esteem, and when people came to him, they walked around him. Um, or it could be that he was just, he was such a spiritual person that people walked around him. Um, but either way, uh, his name was Ogigampi, and it meant they walk around him. And so the eagles on the bottom represent, the big eagle represents my grandfather. And um, the, the, all the smaller eagles in the right side going in a circle represent the Lakota walking around him. And 
he was always very adamant that we remember as family members that we were related to the spotted tails and the spotted tails were our, our relatives. And so, um, I have the three spotted tails done in a pop art style up above, um, uh, it, you know, moving forward and being more modern <laughs> in the art making, so to speak. And that, um, then the eagles below represent my grandfather telling us that, and 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 that was his name, and and so that's all tied together into that. And I've been trying to make a sculpture for years now that best represents that, and uh, it's it's always in the back of my mind. So when um, this opportunity came up, this wasn't an Instagram image. This is one that it just um, I found a picture of spotted tail and I found a pop art thing and I put it in and I was like oh my gosh that's it I gotta make this painting so um that's where uh, that's the roots and the, the passion behind that one was to to demonstrate the uh, remembering our kinship and who we are thanks for sharing that yeah and it, you know, the, the other one that's got the green eagle on the bottom, the eagle represents uh, the Lakota uh, ancestors, so to speak. Um, it's almost like a, it would be like a, a guardian angel or an angel in Christian thought process. And um, we've, uh, my family can go through and, and tell you encounters with the spiritual world and uh, they represent themselves to us to let us know that we're on a spiritual path or that we're that we're doing things correctly. And um, so the green eagle represents uh, our ancestors and then the, the feathers represent us as the Lakota. And then there's other spirits that appear to us and, and guide us and tell us where they are. And that's those spiritual beings that you see floating in on the right side. And, uh, and it's having the wisdom and the, um, to understand that, to listen to when Tungashila speaks to you. Um, and, and when Tungashila is uh, telling you and to be ready and to be aware to be able to hear that. And I go back to uh, Little Crow um, when he was a young man, the Dakota leader of the Minnesota tribe in the 1860s. And he asked his mom when he was young, he said, how do you understand the great mystery? And his mother said, you have to be ready and you have to listen in silence. Um, and so that's kind of that thought process. That's what I'm thinking of in that picture is that uh, when I'm out there painting plain air, um, I'm out there in silence um, and I can hear the great mystery. That is so beautiful. It is Thank you. Just impacts. It impacts people, especially all the um, knowledge that you share that goes into your art it really makes an impact. Anybody else? John's getting close to his destination. So we're gonna have to wrap up soon. If somebody had one last burning question or a friendly shout out that you wanted to make, now's the time. We do have a, one in chat. Um, a request to talk about the Holden evening prayer um, painting, I think. And I think maybe there's two of those. Um, yeah, both of them are um, are prayer related. Um, and and, and, and uh, the one has the buffalo rising in the smoke. Yep, I will find that one and bring it up. Here, lost the screen. And, and being that I'm Norwegian by marriage, you know, you get the old and evening prayer at church during Lent. And at, the, the, the song says, um, uh, My prayers rise up to you like incense before me. Um, and that's a that's a line that we repeat, and I believe you repeat it like four or five times in the in the early third of the song, or maybe the middle portion of the song. And uh, when you're doing that, hold an evening prayer. And so anytime that I'm, uh, you know, around a fire or uh, I'm reminiscent of that, and you're in a situation that you're thinking about good thoughts and having 
uh, and you're and you're trying to remember things that are important to remember. Um, uh, when we offer those up, you know, uh, and, and that's the term we use. It's like watching the smoke or the embers rise up in front of you, and and it, and it gently goes into the air, and it's peaceful and it's caring and it's thoughtful, and it's uh, and so when when I think of like in this one here, when I think of uh, the Lakota, they honored their their brother. Their tableau was uh, the pate, which is which is the buffalo, and um, they honored the buffalo uh, before they went on the hunt. Um, they honored them and asked them uh, to be for humility and remembering that they are giving the best, the greatest sacrifice that they could give, and it, and that the Lakota will use that sacrifice and it won't be in vain. Um, and so. Um, you know, I, that one's remembering, you know, that we're blessed that we have the amount of food that we have in the world today. Uh, and some of us are blessed more than others. Uh, my wife serves on a, a food shelf and, um, and, and just knowing how many people don't have food and, and to remember that the blessings and, the, and we raise that prayer up that everybody could be blessed with food. Then, then the other one was the four eagles rising up. And so that, again, it, it's that, that incense before me rising, um, you know, just the, the eagles then become the smoke that is rising up. And there are four uh, eagles in their different forms of gray and different forms of smoke. And uh, the feathers that are in there are supposed to be like the tendrils rising up on that flame. And... Uh, rising up to the great spirit to to send those prayers so yeah hope that answers the question this has been so great uh the exhibit will be up in the smock gallery through february so through the last friday in february it will be up um our gallery hours are monday through friday and generally mornings and afternoons with a regular hour long break for lunch. So if you're ever wondering and wanna just check in first with us, we, we would love a call to the office just to make sure we're there. So um, I don't want to cut us short. Anyone else need, it, need any um, answers from John? Any life advice? <laughs> Well, and it's always a journey. I'm not perfect in any means. So, uh, you know, it's always about trying. So, yeah. I just want to pipe in and say thank you. I love stories on a cold winter night. So you gave good stories. So it works. Awesome. Thank you. Uh -oh. Well, thank you all for being here. Um, Crystal, we'll put together this, this video. We've recorded this whole no, oh, it's been almost an hour. We've recorded everything and um, we will be putting that up on our website, which will be a link to, or it'll be within John's gallery information. So it should be easy to find. And um, thank you from Smock. Thank you to John. Oh. We, we appreciate you and, and are so uplifted by your talent. Thank you. Thank you. Ilamaye. I appreciate the blessings of Smock and uh, the gift of money and, and the ability to be able to do this. So thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. <laughs>